So I already showed this uh, um, figure during our last lecture. I would like to start from here again. We would uh, will explore this figure in some more detail and uh, uh, we will use it as a justification of uh, the fact that we basically address the iPhone 6 as an electronic system. So we have here the uh, share of uh, uh, electronic system sales on a global scale in 2012. It's, it's uh, already a few years ago, but the, the figures are not so much different now. So uh, this is, is on the y-axis. And uh, you can see here that cell phones are the uh, highest uh, category with 247 uh, 247 billion dollars on a total of 1.3 trillion dollars so a little bit uh, less than 19 percent on the x-axis we have the this uh, um, um, acronym which is CAGR C-A-G-R from 2012 to, to, to 2017 um, CAGR means compound annual growth rate. B basically, it's the average um, percentage increased, the average growth rate, assuming that it was constant between 2012 and 2017. So it's, a, let's say, standard figures for projections uh, of, of sales of, of ch something that changes in, in time. Basically, uh, let me just show you the uh, expression. Basically, you have the sales uh, in 2017, in this case, divided by the sales in 2012. This is five years. You assume that it is something like one, point, one plus the CAGR to the fifth power. So you basically assume that the increase is constant year by year. So uh, what's the meaning, therefore? If we are here on the right, we have something that is growing fast. Okay, here we have a negative CAGR is something that is decreasing. So the share of total electronic sales of that category is decreasing. And you can see here that basically wireless networks and tablets are the category, the categories that are increasing faster. Cell phones are in a good position. So we, are, we can think that on average, since they're increasing faster than the average, on average, this category is going to become more and more relevant. So this is the first reason why we focus on this part. Now, the, the following figure I'm going to show you is uh, uh, also another figure that I've shown last time. So let's put a number here. This is 19% and the CAGR here is uh, something like 6% uh, uh, per year. Okay. Then we move to the other figure which is related to the share of um, sales in each category of integrated circuits as a percentage of uh, the global sales of integrated circuits. So we're talking now about chips, right? And also in this case, you can see here that cell phones are the highest category. It's 22% of the total integrated circuits sold globally are sold for um, cell phones. Okay. Also here on the x-axis, you have the compound annual growth rate and you see that still it's, it's, uh, it's very high. It's something like 13%. And you have to consider that also tablets are very similar to cell phones. Okay. Tablets are similar to smartphones, basically are the same type of system and they are not negligible and they have a very high rate of increase. So this is, is just 
to explain why we focus on smartphones. Consider that now 80% of cell phones are smartphones. Okay, in number, not in value. In value, of course, it's even higher. Now, uh, let's continue along these lines. Uh, this is already something that I've shown you. Smartphone are much higher than PC in number. The turning point is here, is 2011. The number of smartphones sold globally uh, was higher than the number of PC, PCs sold globally. And from 2011 up to now, things have changed dramatically. This is four times now. Uh, the main reason for this is written here. Basically, the average lifetime of a, of a cell phone, of a smartphone, is about two years. The average lifetime of a PC is five years. So you change smartphone faster, then you have to buy more of them. Okay, now we are focusing on a particular type of smartphone, which is the, the, the iPhone, and there's a reason for that too. Uh, let me show it here. These are figures for the first quarter of 2015, so they're very recent. First quarter, of course, means January, February, and March. Uh, we have uh, uh, figures quarter by quarter from first quarter of 2014 to first quarter of 2015. You can see that uh, here, uh, so basically this is Christmas, the Christmas quarter, and typically uh, sales of all smartphones are higher, but uh, uh, the first brand is Samsung. This is in terms of uh, shipments, so single units of smartphones, not in terms of, of dollars. First is Samsung, then is Apple, then is uh, Lenovo and Moto, Motorola, and then Huawei and the others. Now, even if Apple is smaller than Samsung, this is basically only one model. So we have a very precise architecture to consider. Instead, for Samsung, we have a large set of models, uh, mm, some high-end phones, some very cheap phones. So it's, it's easier to concentrate on these ones. Okay, if you consider the single model, the, the, the iPhones, of course, is the, is the most sold. And most of these are iPhone 6. This is just a breakdown of Apple phones, and basically this is the first quarter of 2015, and these are the green part is uh, something like 70% uh, of the total is iPhone 6. Okay, so this is the reason why for us is a good example. Of course, most of the things that I will tell you are independent of the phones, but it's nice to, let's say, concentrate on a particular uh, architecture, on a particular type of hardware. It makes, uh, let's say, the story easier to, to tell. Uh, another thing I would like to uh, highlight here is that uh, there are also additional effects in the sense that, for example, uh, smartphone sales are also attacking the market of cameras. If you look at this plot, this is very interesting. These are the sales of Japanese camera units. So only Japanese, but it's nice to see at least the, the behavior. We're not interested in the actual numbers, but just to understand what happened, okay? These are film cameras. So classical, 
let's say, uh, analog cameras with uh, uh, chemical films. Okay, at some point we have that the digital cameras are introduced to the market, and then we have a drop in uh, in the in the sales of uh, film cameras. Then we have two different categories of digital cameras. These are DSLRs cameras, basically the, re the digital reflex cameras, okay? And these are the compact ones. You see here a strong increase in the sales of both type, but here you can see a compression, a strong reduction. This is basically consisting with the fact that the cameras on smartphones are improving. Basically, they are eating all the market of compact cameras. This is dramatic, uh, basically reduction in, uh, in a couple of years of 60% of the total market. So we're really considering, let's say, uh, a hardware platform which is going to increase in size and importance also in the next years. Well, we can start. So let's, let's uh, start with the teardown. W what I would like to do now is just open it, look at the main pieces, look at uh, uh, w what is inside, and then we will go piece by piece to, in order to explore, the, let's say, the, the basic concepts of electronics that are relevant to that particular block. Okay. Uh, these figures I took from ifixit.com. I don't know if you know this website. Basically, it's a website of, uh, of teardowns and of uh, uh, how to repair uh, electronic stuff. And nice pictures, actually. So you when you open it, basically, this is the display. It's 4.7 inch. Why this is the iPhone 6, the basic one. Then this is the front facing CMOS camera for FaceTime, basically. It's the, the uh, le le let's say, the less performing one. And then we have a battery here, lithium ion battery. Uh, lithium ion batteries are more and more relevant. We will dedicate some time to the batteries because especially for portable stuff, uh, it, it, they, they are really, uh, important component and it's important to, to grasp at least the basic concepts and then here we have the board this is the main board which has an L shape it has the shape of an L so now we have a further look at the board okay this is seen this is this part uh, sorry this is let me take the laser pointer so now we no. Now we look at this part, right here. The next slide is this one. This is the rear facing camera. It's the good camera, the most performing one. It's called EyeSight. And uh, we will de dedicate some time to the technology of this camera in a, in a lecture in a few weeks. Then this part is for the Wi Fi radio. This is the antenna. And in this part, we have also the transceiver chips, the, the module for the Wi-Fi um, communication. Then this is the board. This was where the Wi-Fi antenna was. Now in this photograph, it has been removed. This was the place for the eyesight camera. And this is the board seen from uh, the top. So this is the front side of the board. Uh, let us consider a bit what, what's in there. No? And what's the role of this component? You can see several chips, several integrated circuits, different technology, different uh, vendors. The biggest piece is the processor. This is called A8 in the iPhone 6. Is uh, uh, actually it is a package on package. 
because in this package there is the processor and the DRAM. There's one gigabit DRAM, gigabyte DRAM. Okay. L later today we will look in the 880. For the moment is a, a processor fabricated by TCMC. This is the name of a foundry. Foundry is a company that basically, uh, <coughs> let's say, fabricates integrated circuits for third parties. So, it is, a, is the, the main Apple provider for the processors. And this is the technology. It's a CMOS process with a 20 nanometer, uh, well, more or less, channel length. So th this number is close to the channel length of the FET transistors. Uh, in uh, detail, this processor has 2 billion transistors. Okay, 2BT means 2 billion transistors. Plus, there's one gigabyte, so it means that there's another uh, uh, eight, uh, at least eight billion transistors in the memory. Okay, let's leave it here for the moment. Then we have this part below. Here we have basically the chipset for the uh, cellular phone. Basically, uh, uh, in, in the iPhone 6, we, we have this uh, 4G. This is the 4G part, 4G part. Uh, pr you, you will hear something from uh, Professor Luise about uh, uh, 4G communication. Basically, the standard is called LTE. It's also the commercial name, so you probably have already heard of LTE. And it uh, uh, works in a broad range of frequencies, from 700 megahertz to 2.6 gigahertz. And therefore, in order to do that, you need to have several power amplifiers to transmit in different bands. And for this reason, you have all this chip. You, you see here, this is the LTE modem by Qualcomm. This is the baseband communication. So this is a baseband chip. Then you have the power amplifier modules from different vendors. This is the low band LTE. There's one power amplifier module for the high band LT. There's another one for, for the ultra high band LT. There's another one for the mid band LT. And on the back side, there is another one also. So these are all for the LT. These are power, PA stands for power amplifier. And then here, this black square here is the sensor, the, the, there's an uh, accelerometer and a gyroscope. Okay, there's a three axis accelerometer, so to, to measure acceleration on the three axis, and a three axis gyroscope, so to measure the direction on the three axis. So for this reason, it's called a six axis. It's three gyros plus three accelerometer. <coughs> the provider here is Invensense, which is an American company. And uh, you, you should know that in the previous iPhone models, this block was from ST Microelectronics and actually was designed in Italy. And uh, from iPhone six, let's say the design went to Invensense. So it was a big, uh, uh, yeah, significant problem for STM at the time. Okay, there are also other things on this uh, uh, on this side. If you're ready, I can move uh, to the other slides when we'll highlight the other chips. Of course, I will uh, give you all the all the materials. If you notice, I already put the first lecture on, on, on YouTube. So it's, it's already there. 
let, let us look at the, of course, this should be the place for the SIM card. Okay, this is still the same side of the board. Uh, there is the antenna switch module. This module connects the power amplifiers to the antenna. We have several amplifiers and one antenna, and so the amplifiers need to be selected. Oh, this this uh, switch module selects which of the amplifier is actually connected to the antenna. Then the ha we have another power amplifier for the mid-band LTE. This is another motor for LTE. You see there are several chips all in this part. And in addition, we have this uh, envelope tracking IC module by Qualcomm. Uh, so this, uh, this module um, basically does the following thing. Adjusts the supply voltage of the power amplifier in order to keep the power amplifier working in the, uh, at the maximum efficiency. So adjust the, the, um, the supply voltage. Basically, if, if the, the cell tower is, uh, um, is more distant, then the power amplifier need to, uh, uh, need to um, transmit at a higher power and to keep the power amplifier at the peak efficiency, the supply voltage on the power amplifier is increased. When the, the signal from the, cell tower, uh, from the cell tower is higher, then the power amplifier can transmit at lower power and also the supply voltage is correspondingly decreased in order to keep the power amplifier at maximum uh, efficiency. So the end of this is to course maximize the duration uh, of, of to, to conserve energy to maximize the duration of a battery charge uh, it's called envelope tracking this um, let's say uh, feature and there's a specific uh, integrated circuit for that and then there is another accelerometer which is this green one by Bosch So basically, the iPhone 6 has two accelerometers. One is the one that I've shown you before by Invincence, and another one by Bosch. Basically, the first one is more precise, but consumes more power. And the second one is less precise, but consumes less power. And therefore, depending on the application, you, is one is used or the other. OK? Um, you, you can see there are lots of different vendors for the, for the specific uh, ICs. And of course, for each company, it's really a huge uh, success to, let's say, to provide a piece for the iPhones. At the moment, there are 250 million iPhones sold per year. So if you put a piece here, it means you have 250 million pieces sold per year of that piece. So it, th there's, there's a totally, total, uh, <laughs> total war for entering in this list of providers. And uh, uh, okay, then but then we we'll, we we'll have time to discuss. Then this is the part below. So you, you, we have seen the uh, processor in the middle, the large part, then the space for the SIM card, and then below we have all the chips for the LTE, so the cellular part. Plus, we have the sensors for games, etc. Now, we, we look at what then we have on the top part. There's nothing here. There are just, just uh, connectors, basically. Then we uh, go on the back side of the board. No, on the back side of the board. So we're looking at the other direction. And let's see what we see here. As you can see, the board is very dense. There are lots of pieces here. This is the biggest piece is uh, the flash memory. Uh, here is by SanDisk. It's uh, a flash memory with an architecture that is called NAND. You probably don't know the meaning of NAND architecture. We will uh, we'll 
we will let's say address this concept in one of the next weeks and basically you, but basically you have to know that the NAND architecture is the type of uh, flash memory that is used when you need uh, uh, large amounts of memory so in cell camera in in, in, um, in uh, photo cameras in uh, um, in solid state disks and uh, in USB uh, memory stick, uh, basically you always use uh, NAND flash memories. Of course, you know they are a type of non volatile memory. So the information stored in a flash memory is kept there even when the power is switched off. Uh, commercially, they need to guarantee a 10 year retention of the information. In this case, we have a 60, 16 gigabyte memory, which in terms of uh, bit is 128 gigabit. You should know that a, flash, a bit of flash memory requires one transistor. So basically, in this block, we have at least 128 billions of transistors. This is not just one chip. Typically, in this package, there are some dies die is written like this it's a die with a d it, it, it means a, a, let's say a small rectangular piece of silicon okay this is the biggest piece then we have on top the wi-fi part you remember probably that here uh, we had the antenna in this part and here we have a Wi-Fi module. Basically, this is a single module which contains inside everything is needed for the Wi-Fi radio. It's called, it's done by Murata. This is a Finnish company. Then we have the dialogue power management IC. This is done specifically for Apple. It's this piece. It's a, a pretty important piece. The power management uh, uh, chip basically does two things. Uh, manages the energy inside the, the, the smartphone. And basically, uh, it's required for charging the battery when you, uh, when you, when you uh, basically want to, to, to recharge the battery. Uh, this uh, this chip takes the energy from the um, power supply and ch uh, let's say charges the battery using the algorithm that is required basically there's a specific algorithm in order to charge each battery that has to be followed in order to have a fast charge and conserve the, the properties of the battery and then it also the, the power management I see it also provides all the power supply to all the chips. Th these chips have to be needs different supply voltages, and therefore uh, there are several output uh, wires from the power supply going to all the chips on the board. By the way, this this dialog company has a, um, a design center in Livorno near here and uh, when, when it's a design center where they design this part then the actual uh, production is done again by TSMC the provider in Taiwan that I already <coughs> mentioned okay. all right in this part there's also the uh, chipset for the touch screen there's a controller by Broadcom here This is, there's a specific chip for the motion controller. This is an, a motion coprocessor. Basically, it uh, processes information from the touchscreen and from the sensors and provides input to the processor. It's, a, it's separated. Actually, uh, in the iPhone 6S, the coprocessor, the motion coprocessor is integrated inside the processor. 
so this piece is going away and then finally we have uh, this piece the uh, NFC module uh, NFC is the acronym of near field communication it's a protocol to enable point-to-point uh, -point communication between two phones or between a phone and uh, um, and an external reader uh, that it's not so uh, broadly uh, used but uh, uh, it, it basically it's a capability that it's in all the high-end uh, smartphones uh, we will talk about it because it's connected to the uh, all world of the Internet of Things and the uh, RFID tags so in, in the last part of the, of the course we will address also that, that part and then finally regarding the uh, the cellular communication there is also the RF transceiver transceiver stays for transmit transmit receiver it's the module that does all the let's say radio frequency part of the cell phone communication so low power but radio frequency we have seen the modem which does the baseband part then we have the transceiver which does the radio frequency part and then we have all the power amplifiers which do the um, uh, let's say the, the high power part and then the antenna of course okay uh, we are almost done there are another few pieces here to finish uh, uh, maybe these are the less important one there is another power management management IC by Qualcomm it more or less has the same role of the dialogue one which was here then we have uh, another IC for the cellular communication part which basically does carrier aggregation uh, it's something that is between the power amplifier and the and the RF transceiver sometimes it's not it's not a separate chip in this case it is but I mean for, for the moment we will not look too much into the detail then we have another chip connected to the touch screen the touch transmitter and then we have the NFC booster this is basically a power amplifier for the NFC signal this is here right ah, and finally this was another important piece that we completely missed the audio codec the specific audio chip <coughs> that's it so we have explored all the different pieces <coughs> and uh, and uh, before we go into more detail I would like to um, show you, you the bill of materials and the total cost okay this is the component cost just to have an idea of the numbers this is the iPhone 6 and to give you an idea of what are the uh, let's say most expensive components and what are the least expensive components so the cost of material the cost of, of fabrication of the iPhone is estimated to be something like $227 so the, you, you know the, the iPhone goes for sale uh, at over seven hundred dollars so it's times 3.5 with respect to the cost of the component this is the most expensive piece it's of course the display so the second most expensive piece is the processor okay this is other so it's not a single piece these are several let's say not expensive pieces 
then another part which is of course very expensive is the camera $16 just the camera then I would like this is the uh, BB plus XCR I think is the cellular phone part all the chipset for the cellu cellular communication let me write oh communication and then we have other pieces the assembly and test is not that much expensive it's just this part so the, the really the list of components is expensive you see here, this is power management and, <coughs> and audio, $7 total. Basically, there is one audio codec and two power management IC. So each of them is about one, two dollars. But still, if you multiply by 250 million pieces per year, it's a significant, uh, let's say, turnover for just one chip, okay, for a small piece. So the singular, value of each chip it can be small but of course the, the the volumes are so large that it becomes significant for any company okay now let's look in some more detail at the processor so in this case it's called a8 uh, actually, this processor is designed uh, by Apple and is fabricated by TSMC. This 20 nanometer CMOS process is a planar process. Okay, so basically they are still normal transistors. Very small, but uh, so planar as the transistors of, uh, let's say, 10 years ago. So uh, basically this is a package on package and as I've already told you there are two um, pieces on top we have the DRAM is one gigabyte of DRAM and on the bottom we have the silicon die with the processor in the same package in this package that I'm showing you here of course this is just to save space because the two pieces are pretty large so this is the die of the processor so just to look at the dimension I told you already 2 billion transistors so keep an eye on the numbers the area is 89 millimeter square so it's 8.5 millimeter times 10.5 millimeter so it's it's less than one square centimeter with two billion transistors there are s several connections actually when you make a, a photograph of the of the chip the only thing that you can see are the wires the metal connections between the different transistors and this uh, let's say uh, goldish color here are the, uh, the metal wires and actually in the uh, in this technology there are 10 levels of metal so 10 different planes of metal connections so one can still see the main pieces that are highlighted here this this part uh, this part is for the cpu there are two uh, a dual core CPU you can see this is basically symmetric there are two different cores and they are um, ARM V8 cores so it, it, it's a 64-bit ARM architecture and then there are uh, uh, four GPU cores that are here the GPU means graphical processing unit and it's basically the, the they are basically dedicated cores 
to do image processing, video processing, and 2D and 3D rendering. So uh, as in the in the in the normal PC, there are separate in the normal PC and also in the uh, game consoles there are separate uh, processors for the graphical uh, work. Okay, and in addition to that, the other piece which is clearly different from the other and can be that can be identified is this block of SRAM. Uh, the SRAM means static RAM, static random access memory, and it is always used as a cache. This is the level 3 cache of the uh, processor, and it's uh, uh, shared. It's a shared memory by the CPUs. Uh, the rest is other circuitry, basically. It's not, it is not easy to identify. Typically, there are these companies that as soon as a new product is out in the market, they basically do some reverse engineering. They open each integrated circuit and make photographs and try to, let's say, uh, show what's actually inside. And uh, typically, the business is that they sell a detailed report of each chip, of each chip, of each chip or also other electronic systems uh, let's say, on, on the market to interested competitors. It's a totally uh, legal business. There's nothing wrong. They just open the chip and look inside. Uh, by the way, just to see, uh, uh, let's say, a sneaky preview of uh, the iPhone 6S, there's already something about the new processor in the iPhone 6S, which is called A9. This is a very poor quality photo of the uh, of the A9 and uh, there are a few things that can be seen there's again a dual core CPU here a six core GPU here again the RAM the RAM is very regular so it's easy to identify one can also see the motion coprocessor that is integrated here and the nice part is that it seems that they have two providers because basically this company tried to open two different A9 and they found two different chips inside. So this, basic, uh, this basically means that Apple has two different providers for the same chip. One is TSMC and one is Samsung. And so basically when you buy an iPhone 6S, you do not know exactly what is the a9 inside. They are identical. In many cases, uh, companies try to have multiple providers. For example, in the in the automotive business, it's normal. Each automotive company typically wants to have for each important piece at least three providers. The reason for that is that if some of them have uh, difficulty in uh, providing the volumes that are needed, then one can switch to the other. And it's, I mean, there's always uh, some supplier available. And also, it's good in order to keep uh, costs down, because then you can put one of the provider in competition with the others and, uh, let's say, <coughs> be sure that you can keep the costs under control. As you can. Uh, uh, notice one of the providers is Samsung, which is also a competitor on the other side. Okay, but I mean the business is big, and then this happens. This happen. These things happen all the time. Y the other thing that you should notice is that the process is different. This is a 16 nanometer process, a, a 16 nanometer CMOS process, which by TSMC is a FinFET process. I already mentioned you what is a FinFET. Basically, it's a vertical transistor. So the transistor is in this way with respect to the silicon wafer, to the silicon die, is oriented in this direction. So the channel is uh, uh, vertical. There's a fin of silicon which uh, represents the channel of the transistor. Also, the process by Samsung is a 14 nanometer FinFET process. So you see there's a scaling down of the dimensions. We go from 20 nanometer to 16 nanometer. 
there's a change in the type of technology that is used. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, now I, I will stop here. We'll make five minutes break and then we will go in some deep details about the CMOS um, the CMOS figures of merit and the scaling problems. Okay. <laughs>